All right, so here we are. We're in week two of our three-part project, which is to design a package for either Chateau Vineyards, Wild Bill, Gourmet Hot Sauce, or Cool Breeze Perfume or Cologne. Last night, what I did was I began the process of putting together the package, showing you how to build it in such a way that you would be able to come up with the, the trim, the bleed, and the folds. We went through that process. So we end up with our box basically built. Now, what I'm going to be working on tonight is the second part of this week's assignment, which is the process by which we begin to put together the graphics for the final box. We don't really have to have the, the complete final box done tonight because that's part of next week's assignment. But what we want to do is we want to begin to rough out the box. We want to get the box basically figured out so that we kind of know what direction that we're going in. Um, so we're going to work on that. I've got some elements that I'm going to work on and show you and uh, – um, where I think I want to start off is with a very quick explanation of something that I have right here. You were given a logo for each one of these projects. There's a Chateau Vineyards logo. See, download Chateau Vineyards logo. And you also have some box information. So I've downloaded the Chateau Vineyards logo and box information because it's what I'm actually going to be building. But I also downloaded the Wild Bill gourmet hot sauce which has a logo and box information now what i'm going to do tonight is also oh by the way also there is a cool breeze um cologne logo and box information as well now the important thing to understand is and here is what it's where it says this the logo that you download it depends on which one of these you're going to use and it doesn't matter to me which one you want to use I'm actually going to play around with two different ones tonight I'm going to actually show you how to color the Wild Bill gourmet hot sauce and the only reason I'm doing this is because you color all three of them essentially the same way um, the reason I'm doing the Wild Bill one is because personally I think it's a little more fun than the other two and uh, you know I always like to have fun when I do this stuff so I'm, I chose Bill's Gourmet uh, because it's a fun one to do and um, but I also have done the Chateau Vineyards because that's what I'm actually building my box with. Uh, and we're going to work with that one. But but to just show how to color this, we're going to be working with Wild Bills. But let me just get back. And also, there's a, a Cool Breeze Perfume or Cologne logo. Now, what I was beginning to say a moment ago, you really do pretty much the same process by which you color all three of these logos. I mean, they all sort of get colored essentially the same way. Okay? So when I show you how to do Wild Bills, you will probably use the almost exact same technique, if not the exact same technique, to do the Chateau Vineyards logo or the Cologne uh, logo. Either way, you're going to use the same basic technique. So it's not something that I'm showing you one way to do it and there's another way to do it. They pretty much can be colored using the same basic technique. All right? So the logo that we download from any one of those three it's an Illustrator file, and it is in black and white. So essentially, we start off with a black and white logo. Uh, we chose a color scheme um, with our week one assignment, which we chose for our mood board, and we're going to take that, that color scheme that we chose, and we're going to walk it through this process, and we're going to use, that, use that, that color scheme in our package. So if you did something with Cool Breeze, hopefully you will have picked colors that would make sense with a Cool Breeze uh, box. Wild Bill's Hot Sauce, you would pick a color scheme that would make sense with Wild Bill Gourmet Hot Sauce. Chateau Vineyards, same thing. Um, and using these colors, 
uh, we'll move on to the next step of the packaging design process, okay? So that is the first thing that I'm going to deal with. Now, this is listed in week one. Yeah, uh, week one, okay? It's listed in week one, so I just want to make sure that you understand where I'm getting this from because I also have week two here, and we're going to talk about the rough layout shortly. But I am in week one, and I'm looking at where it says choose only one of the three pro product pack package options below. You pick one of these, okay, and you're going to download the Chateau Vineyards logo and box information, or you're going to go the Wild Bill way and do download Wild Bill's Gourmet Hot Sauce logo and box, or the Cool Breeze uh, Perfume Cologne logo and box information. All right, and then again, read this carefully and understand. All right, um, you're going to create the mood boards. We, we, this is already done. So really, that's it. All right. So I'm going to go into Adobe Illustrator now. Let me let's go into Adobe Illustrator and let's take a look at what I got here. Okay. So I have I've loaded my colors. There are my colors. I've loaded all of my colors in here. I've also loaded my colors in here. And I went over this last night as to how I loaded those colors. I also prepared a original. This is my original black and white version. This is what it looks like going in. This is the black and white version of the art. And this is the version, more or less, that I arrive at. This is what I ended up coloring it, okay? So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to go through the process by which I colored this showing you how I go about coloring this and you know how you could do it so what you have to understand is in order to make this work what you really want to do is you want to remove all of the colors that are in there by default and you want to just load in the colors that you want to use from your colors that you chose the reason I say that is because we're going to come in here and we're going to use the live paint bucket tool. And if you take a look, there's my, see my little cursor here. If you take a look at that live paint bucket tool, you'll see that there's a, what looks like a bucket. And right above it, there's a little arrow that points to three different little squares. Now, what you need to understand is this works by virtue of choosing the colors that are in here and displaying them by clicking the right and left arrow keys. Do you see how, I'm, how my colors are changing? I'm looking right here. Look at my colors changing. They're changing because I'm using the right arrow key to, to cycle through them. Now I'm back to the, the beginning, which is, see, so I'm, I start here. There's none, there's registration, there's white, there's black, and then there's this green color, and again, these are CMYK. I could have changed the names, but I didn't. There's the red, there's the uh, orange, the yellow, this brownish uh, or burgundy color, and then that hot uh, red color, okay? So it's important to understand that when you have this tool here and you look at that tool, there are those three little squares right at the top, and if you use your right arrow key, what it'll do is it'll cycle you through the colors. And that's how you apply the colors, okay? You'll, you'll pick the color this way, and then we'll select this art, and we'll apply it. So let me show you how, what I'm talking about. I'm going to start off by getting my selection tool, and I'm going to marquee select that entire piece. Okay, so everything now is selected, all right? Now, what I want to do is, and again, I've got this sitting over here, so I can use this as a reference, all right? Uh, you probably won't have this. I have it because I just think it's going to make it a lot easier for you to see what I'm doing, all right? So now what I'm going to do, remember, I got my colors loaded here. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to choose the Live Paint Bucket Tool, and I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to look at my three colors, and I see that right now the color in the center that's, that's selected is the yellow. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide what elements within my logo that's selected right now, what elements do I want to make yellow? And if I know, like for instance, I have this color here, that's yellow, and the gloves are yellow. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click 
and place that color yellow right there. Now I'm going to move over to here. And can you see what happens as I move over these areas? They highlight in red. And when they highlight in red, then I know I'm in a spot where I can drop that color. And when I drop that color, I get yellow there. Okay? So I'm going to continue doing this. I'm now going to come down and I'm going to start doing his gloves. Now the important thing to understand is if you take a look at that little icon there, there's a bucket. And right above the bucket, there's a little black arrow. That little black arrow is the location that you want to place that over the area that you want to color. So the color comes from that little arrowhead. So if I want to fill that arrow right or that little area uh, by his bottom of his glove there, it, it highlights, you can see the little arrow is in the position. I click and the color goes in. Now I'm going to move up and I'm going to go to the next area, which is right there. I'm going to click and I'm going to place that color in there. Now what I may do to make this a little easier is I may zoom in on this a little bit. Okay? Go back and get my, my color, my um, live paint bucket tool. And I'm going to come in here now and I'm going to start filling the areas of his glove in with yellow. And I make sure that my little arrowhead is sitting over top of the area that I want to fill. Right there is his thumb. And you can see it gets red. And I click and now I get that color. And then I come over here and I click and I get that color. And I'm going to keep doing this and I'm going to fill in his glove. Just like that. And soon I will have that entire glove done. I move away. His entire glove is done. I missed one spot, and that is his little finger in the trigger. And there's actually two little bits there, surprisingly enough. But now I've got that entire glove done. So I'm going to come over here now, and I'm going to do the same thing to the other glove. All right? Because I want the other glove to be yellow as well. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm just going to find the parts that are his glove. And I'm going to place that little arrow over top of the area. It should highlight in red. I push the color in by clicking. And I have my glove now filling up. Give me a second, and we're almost there. And now if I come away, I'm going to deselect this so that you can see what I've done. Okay? So this is how we go, uh, this is how we go about coloring this thing. So once again, let me, uh, let me select this. Let's go select. Uh, oh, it's not going to let me reselect. Huh. Let's go view fit artboard and window. There we go. And let me marquee select this guy again. Okay, so marquee select that. Okay, so now we're selected. Let's go view, zoom in. Okay, let's zoom in a bit more. View, zoom in a bit more. Uh, zoom in. There we go. Okay, and now what I want to do is I want to go to the next color. So the next color I think I want to do is, is let's do his hat. And let's do that outside circle. And let's do the wild bill. So I'm going to go for this area here, this area here, that area there, that area there the Wild Bill, the hat band, and the areas of his hat, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to get the Live Paint Bucket tool. Currently, the color is yellow. So in order for me to change that color, I'm going to go and I'm going to click on the right arrow. Uh, actually, let's choose the left arrow. And let me bring that orange up. So now I have that orange, and I happen to know that my orange is being used there, and it's also being used here. Now be careful to make sure that when you place this thing to color, the proper thing is highlighting. If you get off of that, you'll see when I sit over top of the right place, you'll see that that area highlights. And then when I walk away from it, it is now orange. So make sure the highlighting is in the right place and you'll be okay. And I'm going to click, and I'm going to place that orange right there. Okay? Now, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think that's all the orange there is. But you know what? Actually, I think I'm going to come in here, and I think I'm going to use the orange for his bandana instead of red. I'm going to use orange for his bandana. Now, watch what I do here. Again, I'm going to come over here with my left arrow, and I'm going to pick another color, which I believe is my bright red color. And I don't know whether I want the bright red. I think I want to go the other direction. So let me go darker. I think I want something like, like that. All right? So that brown color is what I'm going to use for his band right there. 
There you go, okay? And now I have a brown in there, all right? Let's go one, let's go one more back. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here, and if you notice what I did, I didn't paint all of his, I didn't paint all of his hair. I painted certain areas of his hair. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to paint certain areas of his hair with this brown. I'm not going to paint all of it, but just some of it with the brown, okay? And some of it I'm going to leave like a highlight, all right? So I'm actually looking at my original and I'm painting a couple of these things brown. Now if I come out here, you can see some of them are brown and some of them stay white. I'm going to do the same thing on his little beard here, on his mustache. I'm going to come over here with the brown. I'm going to click on that one. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click on that one. And now let me go to the view menu and let's go fit all in window. And let me go select, deselect. There we go. Okay, so you can see that I'm beginning to put this guy together. He's starting to look pretty good. Actually, looking pretty good, he looks like this. Okay, so essentially I'm, I'm showing you how I went in and how I did this. This is basically how I did this. Okay, so... I'm going to continue because I got a little more work to do. I still want to do a little bit of green on his jacket. I want to change the wild bills to a bright red. I want to change this down to that brown color, and I want to put red out here, okay? So I'm going to continue the work. Uh, so I go back in, and I select the whole thing by Mark Keene. I want to select the whole thing by Mark Keene. I wonder if I can... I think I can just click it. Yeah, I, since it's grouped, I can just click it. That's the other way you could do it. So let's go back here, and let's get the live paint bucket tool again. Now, I got the browns done. I got the yellows done. I need the bright red. I need the green. So let, let's do the green. I'm going to come in here now, and I'm going to try to locate the green. And there is the green. So you can see in the middle is the green. This is what you got to look at. You got to look at the right here. The one in the middle is green. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in because it's easier to do it when you zoom in a little bit and get the, the paint bucket tool, make sure it's green, and then I'm going to carefully come over here and I'm going to click and I'm going to make that green. And then I'm going to click and I'm going to make that green. And then I'm going to click and I'm going to make that green. Do I have green? Yes. And then I'm going to click and I'm going to make that green and click and make this green. Okay and click and make that green. Now, what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to go for the red. So what I'm going to do is take a look. I'm going to sit it there, and I'm going to use my right arrow key, and I'm going to go through this, and I'm going to find the bright red. Uh, I guess that's the bright red right there. So what I'm going to now do is come down here and take a look at what I'm doing. This is, this is black. The Wild Bills are currently black. But I can even recolor this. All I have to do is sit on top of it and take a look. And you see the highlighting goes red around part of the wild? I'll click on that. It goes to red. Then I'm going to move over to the rest of the W. And now I got that red. So it works on black. as It works on any of these shapes, really. So I'm just going to keep with the little arrow sitting over top of my little letter. And I'm just going to keep going across here and I'm going to fill it with my color. Go to Bill. I have to do every single little shape separately. That's the way it works. You can't just do it all at once. You've got to do them separately. Little Each piece gets done, and there that is, okay? Now, I want to also color this area with the red, and I also need to color this area with the red. I also want to color this area with the red, and I want to color that area with the red. Remember, you got to sit over top of it, you got to see the red highlight, and you got to make sure that that little arrow is sitting inside of the area that you want to fill with the color, and you click and you get the color. There. Now let's, let's go to the view menu, and let's fit all in window, and let me deselect this, and let's compare the two together. So really, you can see that with the exception of making his little um, bandana orange instead of red, I've got the exact same thing on both sides, and it's very easy to do, all right? I don't think you'll have any trouble doing this whatsoever. So the only thing that I really have left to do is I have to change the gourmet hot sauce to that dark brown. So once again, what I'm going to do is come in here, and I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to zoom in on it. Let's zoom in on it because it makes it a lot easier to do it this way. Zoom in on the thing, all right? 
And then I'm going to get my live paint bucket tool and I'm going to use my arrow key, my right arrow key, and I'm going to get the brown, all right? And I think that brown is what I want to use. And, or is it the, the dark? Let me see. Uh, I think that's the one. That's it right there. So I click on the E, and I'm going to click on the C. And you can see the highlighting. Look for the highlighting. That red highlighting means that you're going to click and you're going to fill that area with that color. So make sure that you see the highlighting. That's what's important here. And I'm going to go, you got to go through all the letters and do this, each one individually, because they are not grouped together or, or made into one piece. They're separate pieces. And you just fill them all in. I am not, I am not having a hard time doing this. I am enjoying doing this. This is not bad. This is not hard to do. It's kind of fun. So now I'm going to go view, fit, all, and window. And let's compare the two of them together. And let's see what we got. Okay, so there you have the final piece the piece is basically done okay that's how you go about doing it and you could do the same thing when you're working on the other two logos the only thing that I recommend that you understand to make this a lot easier for you is that make sure that in your swatches panel right here make sure that you only have the colors that you want to use if you have more colors in there than you want to use, if there are other colors in there, what's going to happen is you're going to end up cycling through those colors along with the colors that you're working with, and you're going to find yourself getting confused, and it, it could turn into a mess. So one of the things that I do, the very first thing that I do when I do this is I get rid of all of the colors. I showed you how to do that last night. Get rid of all the colors, and I load in just the colors that I'm going to use for my logo, okay? Um, that's it. Now, um, before I move on, there's one more thing I want to show you, and I, I think, I'll, well, maybe I'll wait. Maybe I'll wait till I do the wine thing. Work on work on that with the wine. Um, yeah, I guess I'll do that. So anyway, this is how you're going to recolor your logo, and it doesn't matter which logo you're working on. You're going to do the same basic process. I think I had. I think I have one little thing that I need to do here that I forgot to do, and that is the, the tip of that little uh, cigarette right there that needs to be bright red. Let's get the red. There it is. And let me click on the red edge at the tip of that right there there we go and is there anything else yeah no I think I'm good I'm, I think I'm good there we go okay so you see now there you there you have it that's your finished logo as far as the colors are concerned that that is how I am going to color my pieces for um, my for my um, project now there's one other thing you might want to do to check this because you could run into a problem with this what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rectangular shape and I am going to go object arrange send to back now you see what's going on here there's a problem and I'm going to make this a very different color than my color let me make this like a green color so that this really stands out you'll see what's going on here okay so take a look here now we have a problem here I have areas in my design where there is no color. All of this area here, there is no color. Okay, now I'm gonna want all this to be white. So what, what does that mean? That means that my job really isn't done yet. I have got to, and let me start off by going object, lock, selection. And let me start off by um, selecting this guy and I have to go in here now and I have to go through this and I have to fill all this area in with white. I, I point this out to you because this is not, I didn't do this, this is how the logo came. So that means that the logo's not correct. If you want to put this logo in front of a color like I'm doing right here, see it's going to look like that and it's not going to look right. So you really need to deal with this. I'm going to show you how to deal with this thing in a minute. But right now, this is fairly easy. You're just going to select this thing, and I'm going to zoom in on it somewhat to make it a little easier for me to do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in and get my live paint tool. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to make that white. Uh, now what? 
Hold on. Now, let's see here. What, 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 what's, what's going on here? Uh, okay, let's see now if I can get it. There we go. There we go. So white, okay, wherever you see green, you're going to put white. So I see there's green there, okay, and there's green there. I'm going to make that white. I'm going to make that white. This gets a little tricky because some of these areas are very small, so you have to take, take your time like I'm doing, but it's very important that you do this. If you don't do this, you are not going to get your logo look right if you put it against a solid background, which is what I am going to do with mine. So I'm going to, I'm going to again, go through here, and I'm going to find all of my areas that do not have white in it. And I know where they are. I can, I can see them. And I'm going in there one at a time, and I'm filling them. I think there's, I guess, I think they're okay there. There's one there that I think maybe, I guess not. All right, so the face is all done. This is all done. I got to come in here, and I have to get the gun on the left. And I'm just going to carefully go through here, fill them all in. You'll see the difference in a minute when I get done with this. It's going to look right. Okay, and I'm going to scroll this down a little bit because I think we're good at the top. Yep, let's go down. I need white here. I need white here. I need that. There we go. I think that's all good. Okay, and I need white there, 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 and there. And let's go over to there. And I need a white there and white there and white there. I think I got all that. Okay, so now let's go to the view menu and let's fit our board and window and let me deselect this and let's take a look at it. Okay, so you see now this logo is perfect against a, a background. We filled in all of the areas that were missing color. Everywhere this logo is, it's going to sit over top of it. Now, this banner probably should be white. So what I'm going to have to do to make this work is, and this is interesting, I'll show you how I'm going to handle this. What I want to do with this, I'm going to zoom in on this again because it make it easier for me to see it if it's a little bit bigger. What I'm going to do is I am going to come over here to my layers panel and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this white for banner. Uh, B A N N E R. Wait for banner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this thing down to here, like this. Okay. And then I'm going to create another layer, and I'm going to call this background. Okay. Background. And the background layer is going to be all the way down at the bottom. And now I'm going to go object, unlock all. Okay. And and I have my I'm going to select my, whoops, I'm going to select my background layer, and I'm going to drag that all the way down to the background layer. So now I can hide it by clicking that eyeball, okay? Now I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to get my banner in view, and I think I have to go view, zoom out. I have to zoom this out just a tiny little bit. All right, now here's what I have to do. In order for me to make this banner white, I am going to have to either paint or I'm going to have to draw uh, a banner. I think I'm going to try to use the paintbrush tool with this. So I'm going to select white, no black stroke, and I'm going to get my paintbrush tool, okay? And I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to make sure I'm on the white for banner layer. I'm going to lock the background layer, and I'm going to lock the Wild Bill art layer, and I'm going to come in here now, and I'm going to very carefully start painting. See how that works? Look at that. Isn't that great? I'm just going to carefully paint a banner in. I could make this thing bigger, but I don't want to rush it. I want to do a neat job. I'm painting a banner in, and because I'm on that layer right there, it's in front of the background layer, and it's behind the Wild Bill art layer. So it's in the proper position that when I do this, immediately you can see the end result. And you don't see that it's a raggedy edge 
because it's underneath the other art. So you don't have to worry about it being a perfect edge. All you have to do is make sure that you paint the area that you wanted painted. You don't have to worry about it being neat because it's going to fall in behind the other art. Okay, but you do have to paint it in and it does take a few minutes to do this Okay, but you get the general idea and I'm gonna come over here And I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to come around and meet it on the other side I have to go out a little bit more right about there. There we go That's pretty good. I think I can let it go at that and then you're just gonna keep painting until you paint the whole thing in and Then what you'll have is you'll have a logo. That's ready to go. It's gonna be perfect and it's going to look very cool. You just keep painting it. All right. I'm using the paintbrush tool. And I can make it bigger by, by uh, using the fancy bracket. I just made it bigger by, by using the fancy bracket on your keyboard. Okay. And I use the right to make it bigger. And I use the left fancy bracket to make it smaller. And I'm almost done. I just got a little bit more to do here. There you go. See that? And then I got to come over here and I got to do this area here. What I'm doing is I'm kind of going along the edge. I'm getting the, e the hardest part done first. And then the other part will be easy. There we go. And I just zip that out like that. And that's pretty good. There we go. Now let's go view. Hit artboard and window. And look at that. Uh, see? So again, I, what I want you to understand is we have a background layer. I put this background on a background layer. And this background is not going to be exported with the art. This is a background I put in here just so that you could see what the art looks like against the color background. That's the only reason I did it. Okay. I have a white for banner layer. Okay. So that I could add color to that banner just like I did there. Because there, there is nothing there. And, if, and you see the problem is why I didn't do it the other way is there's an opening on this side right there and an opening on that side right there. So if I tried to use the, um, the um, live paint bucket tool, it would put the color in here, but it would leak out those ends and it would go all around the whole background like this. And that's not what I want. So I used a different tool and I use that paintbrush tool because I can then go in here and I can paint myself a really nice white banner behind this, making it easy to do. So there it is. There is my logo. That's how I colored my logo. When I'm ready to export this logo, I'm going to go to my layers panel and I'm going to uh, get rid of that background layer by just dragging it to the garbage. Okay. And this artwork now is ready to be um, exported for uh, my package. And what I could do if I wanted to is I could select the whole thing like this. And I could go object group. Okay. And now the whole thing is grouped. Let me see. Oh, no, 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 no. I, that's unlocked. Let me go edit undo. I, I've got to unlock that layer first. Now we go view fit, our, fit all in window. Now I can come in here and I can select the whole thing. Okay. And now I get the whole thing selected. And I can go object group. Okay. Now that white banner is no longer on that layer. It's, it's up here on a subgroup layer of this art because it's been grouped with it. Okay, so actually I can now get rid of that layer. I don't need it anymore, okay? And now I have my Wild Bill art all ready to go into my package. So there it is. That's how you recolor your logo. And I don't really care. I don't care whether you're, you're working on the, um, uh, whatchamacallit, the, uh, uh, logo for the wine or the logo for the um what is it uh, uh um cologne it, you, you'll basically you'll basically be able to do the same thing so there you have it that's how i recolored that logo all right so now let's move on to our box okay so here is our box now what i'm going to be doing tonight is I'm going to hide this, hide the graphics, hide the background. Just going to remind you of what we did last night. Last night, what we did was we produced these three elements right here, which are the folds, okay? And the folds are basically dotted gray lines that show where the box folds. There are the fold lines, 
okay? And I showed you how to do that last night. The bleed, I showed you how to produce the bleed, all right? And the, the dye right there, which is basically how we built the box and then combined all the panels together, all right? And a combination of the, the dye, the bleed, and the folds, all three of those are the project for week two. That is step one, okay? And like I said, I demonstrated last night how that gets done. You should have very little trouble, you know, figuring out how that works. So now the next step is, um, this is actually a pretty finished version of my package. This is what my package is going to look like. It's pretty finished. It, it, there's most of everything that's on here. So, you know, this is where we're heading with this, but you don't have to have this thing completely finished tonight. You can work on this. You can bring this into a state of, you know, almost finished, and that would be more than fun. Okay, but this is where I'm heading with my box. Now, very important for you to understand, there's the top of my box there is the back of my box. I know this may seem very strange to you that the back would be over to the left here, but keep in mind that there's the bottom of the box and there's the top of the box. And you want the box to open up so that the, this, um, this lid goes to the back so you could slide the bottle out in front of it with the box facing you. So that would mean that the front would have to be over here. And there's your side and there's your side. Okay, you would definitely want the sides and you would want the front over here and you would want the back here. Okay, so again, it's just it's very important that you understand that and 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 uh, you know, that's why I wanted to go over it. Okay, so I've got this open. I'm going to close Wild Bill because we're done with him. Close that. Let's get that out of here. Save changes. No, oh, I hit yes. All right, let's go to um, let's go to the start okay so this is what we worked on last night and we have our colors in here this is what we worked on last night and we have our layers here let me get this thing put away we have our layers here all right let me make the layers a little bit smaller if i can there we go so we have our layers and i have created all right uh this is my sample that's all that is is that thing right there and I'm going to actually get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of that for this. This is now going to be dial line Monday. This is going to call this file save as I'm going to call this uh, Tuesday night. Change it to Tuesday night. T-U-E-S-D-A-Y. Tuesday night. And then hit uh, save. Okay. And hit okay. All right. So I'm going to throw away, I'm going to throw away the sample layer because I no longer need that. The instructions are done. I'm going to select this whole thing. It's locked, so I'm going to unlock everything. Let me just unlock everything. And I'm going to select the whole thing, and I'm going to hold the shift key down, and I'm going to use my left arrow key to move that thing over to the left. Okay, because I want to create space. Oops, I missed something. I don't think that matters. That's just a leftover piece of something. Yeah, that's nothing. Delete that. Okay. Yeah, I just want to move this over. Move it over to about here. Oh, come on. All right, let's try to get up. Let's get the whole thing selected here. All right, let me move it over. Right about there is good. There we go. And there's a little weird something there. Let's delete that. Okay. Now, my folds, just, just to get us back on to where we're focused, my folds are all on that layer right there, and they're correct. All correct. They're folds. The bleed. There's my bleed. And that's correct. Okay? And then we have our trim. There's our trim. Okay? Then we have a background layer and we have a graphics layer. So we actually are done with the trim dye layer. We're done with the bleed layer. We're done with the fold layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on the background layer first. Now, this is a two step operation. Then I'm going to explain to you how I'm going to do this. When I designed my box, let me go back to my sample to show you. When I designed my box, I decided that I want my box to be 
uh, this beautiful purpley color. Uh, and I wanted the whole box to be this really nice, elegant purple color. I, I like the dark purple. I like the dark box for the wine. I think it's a really sexy look. So I wanted to have that color. There's a couple of things that you need to understand. The, the color bleeds everywhere on this, okay? Uh, when you put this box together, um, you don't need to have the color go all the way over this edge here. You can, I can probably make it a little bit deeper, but you don't need to have it go all the way along that edge there because it folds in. You can't put it here. And the reason you can't put it here is because this is where they put glue. And the ink that they use to print this box often will interfere with the bonding of the glue. So you want to make sure that the color that you're going to use goes everywhere but here on this glue strap. Down here at the bottom, now that I think about it, uh, this color has to be, the blue has to go all the way down to here, I believe. It doesn't necessarily have to go. I'm going to actually run it all the way down to the bottom here. And I think tonight I'm going to actually run it off the top there as well. I think the only place that I'm going to not have that purple color is on the glue strap. Uh, and again, there's a reason for it. You don't want it to be on the glue strap because it interferes with the glue. So let's go back to my dye line box. And I'll show you how I'm going to do this. So I got my background layer selected. That means that my trim dye line is beneath it, but my bleed and my folds are above it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here with my rectangle tool. Actually, what I'm going to do is let me get the guide layer showing up again. Let me click on the guide layer, and let me just drag a guide out to about right there. Okay, right there. Uh, I, I don't have to measure this exact. I just got to make sure there's my fold. I got to make sure that I got about an eighth of an inch and there's more than an eighth of an inch there, I have to be able to cross that guide so that this thing gets folded in and you don't see the white, okay? So I got plenty of that there so that you don't have that white showing. But I do also have to keep this area clear. I can't put any color on this. This is where the box gets glued together. It's the only place that they use glue on this. The rest of this is a folding deal. So you gotta make sure that you have no color on that area. So I'm going to now come in here with my rectangle tool, and I am going to, yeah, choose my rectangle tool, and I'm going to come up here to that guide, and I'm going to click, and I'm going to drag a rectangular shape just like that, okay? And now if I deselect it, you'll see i got a black line. See my little black line there? All right, I'm going to select it. I'm going to remove that stroke, bring the fill forward, and I'm going to go to my swatches, and I think I'm using that purple right there. There we go. Yes. So there's my, there's my purple. So that's what it looks like. I'm going to hide the guide so that you can get a better look at this. Oops, you know what? Accidentally got this on the wrong layer. That's, that's my purple color. That purple color wants to be on the background layer, so I'm going to actually drag it up, and now it's on the background layer. So if I hide the guides layer... There you have it. So take a look at what you're seeing here, okay? Take a look at what you're seeing. You can see the red bleed lines. You can see the gray fold lines. You can see them clearly against this, uh, against this field of um, um, blue, purple. So what I want to do is I want to make the blue look like it is just on the box. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the bleed, okay? Because I don't need, I'm not going to need the bleed on this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the, the trim die line and I'm going to click to select that. See how I've clicked to select this thing? And I'm going to go edit, copy, all right? And now I'm going to go back to my background layer and I'm going to hide that bleed layer. And I'm going to select that purple color, and I'm going to go edit, paste in front. So what I did was I placed my, my trim line right in front of my background rectangular color. Okay? I hope you understand that. That trim line now, a copy of it, has been placed right in front of that purple shape. 
The reason I'm going to do this is because I am going to create a clipping mask. And what the clipping mask is going to do is it's going to hide the color everywhere outside the shape of my trim line. So everything out here, see all this out here? It's going to hide all that. And what you're going to see in the end is you're going to see uh, a perfect shape of that blue in that box. It's fabulous. Wait till you see this. So now I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to select that. I got both the, the rectangular color selected and I got the box uh, die line or trim line selected as well. I'm going to go to the object menu. I'm going to go down to clipping mask and I'm going to choose make. Now watch what happens. Look at that. Isn't that great? So now I have a box. There's my box. And if you take a look at this, the box now is showing uh, and the fold lines, the, the uh, score lines are showing. Okay. Now I'm going to bring back the trim die line. Now the reason I brought the trim die line back is because we could not see this glue flab, the uh, glue tab. So now I can see the glue tab. So there is the box. That is how I am going to submit the box uh, to make color, to show the colors. So, you know, again, I showed you how to make a, a box that has color over the entire box. If you don't want to have a box that has color over the entire box, then what you're going to do on your background layer is you're going to literally go in there and you're going to color the layers or co color the sections the way you want to color them carefully and then and make sure that you color them you know oversized like I did and then you'll do the same step where you'll copy the trim line and paste it in front of your colors and then make a select it all and make a clipping mask and you'll end up with largely the same thing that I have there except that you'll have more than one color or you'll have like for instance if I wanted these side panels these two side panels if I wanted them to be white okay what I would have done is I would have put white in there okay uh, maybe I'll show you what I'm talking about Let's go edit, undo, layer panel options, edit, undo, make clipping mask. Okay, let me just show you what I'm talking about. Let me go to my background layer here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I wanted to, I could come in here, and let's see if I can get this done. I'm going to create a shape just like this, like that. Okay, and I'm going to move the shape over until I hit that line right there. Okay, that's close enough for, I think, close enough for our purposes. And I'm going to make that white, okay? Because I just want to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to have no stroke on it, okay? So I got now, now I have uh, a white, I have a white, and I have a, a purple color, all right? So what I'm going to do is come back in here, uh, and I'm going to click on this guy and go edit copy. Actually, I wonder if it's there. Let me see. Let me hide that one. Yeah, it is. Okay, so I got to do this. I got to select this, and I got to go, uh, let's go edit cut. All right, and let's go to select both of them. Edit paste in front. Okay, now watch. When I select both of those, the white and the purple, along with that, um, trim line, go to object, and go to clipping mask, make, there you have it, okay? That's what you end up with. You end up with that white panel right there. Now I'm going to go edit undo, okay, because I don't want that. I'm just trying to show you that that's how you would do it. So you delete this thing. Now what I'm going to do is go back in and do what I actually intended to do, which was to make a clipping mask out of these two. Object, clipping mask, make. Boom. And now I have my box color. Okay, so you're going to submit um, whatever part of this box that you have done. But you're also going to submit this. You're also going to submit this. Let me get the graphics in the background hidden. Oh, uh, I want that. Close, close that and close that. This has also got to be submit, submitted. So you're actually going to submit this. And then you're going to submit a wine box with some graphics on it.
okay? So let's go in and let's take a look at the wine uh, logo. So here's my wine logo. Uh, this is the before logo. This is what the logo looks like before. This is how I designed my logo with colors. And as you can see here, I have my color scheme. Uh, this isn't exactly the purple that I'm using. It, it doesn't matter because I'm not really using this purple in my logo. I'm using the green, I'm using that beige, and I'm using that, I guess it's a, um, I don't know, uh, some kind of a dark brownish color in my logo, okay? Now, the, I have a background layer, and the reason I have that background layer is because I have white elements in my logo. And if I, if, if I don't show it against the background, you can't see most of it, and it looks very strange, okay? So I, I make sure that I have my, my um, uh, background in place so that you can see what's going on. I'm going to hold the shift key down so I can get that premium wine selected, and I'm going to go object group. Now I have my logo element, and I have this background, and this background I am not going to use. I just want to remind you that I did the very same thing See, I got my colors up here. There are my colors. I did the very same thing with this, okay, that I did with the other. I came in here with this guy, and I chose my colors, okay? I don't know where my colors are. Let's see. There was, there's the green. Came in here, and I clicked on that green right there, Okay. And I went to a darker green. I'm not going to do it again. You saw me do this, okay? But that's basically how I did this, okay? And I think that's not even the right green. I think that's lighter green is over here, okay? But at any rate, that's basically how I did this. This is my final logo. I'm going to hide this. Now that I have this logo done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the logo just like this, and I'm going to go edit, copy. Then I'm going to come into my box, which I'm working on, and I'm going to go edit, paste, and I'm just pasting that logo in. And there is my logo. My logo comes in. So what I want this logo to do is I want this logo to appear on the front panel right about there. So I'm bringing the logo in, and I'm going to put this on my graphics. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to put this on my graphics layer. So, I, again, I have layers set up here. So I want to make sure that I get these all in the right layer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm, I, I'm going to uh, lock the fold layer. I've, left, I've shut the, the bleed layer off because I don't need the bleed layer for this. You don't really want to see the bleed layer for this. What you do is you want to see the trim layer. Okay, so I'm going to leave the trim layer showing. I'm going to leave the fold layer showing for this. Uh, the bleed is going to hide. The box is going to hide. And the background is going to show because I want to see the color, and my graphics are going to show. Now, let me deselect that, and you can see how that logo looks on that package, okay? So there's where I want to put my logo on the front. Now, what, what, I'm, what I'm saying to you is that this is the process that you're going to go through to um, create this layout tonight, okay? Uh, you're going to continue this process next week, to finish this box, and next week I'm going to show you how to go about rendering this box into a beautiful 3D model. You're going to love it. It's really cool. It's tremendous to know how to do, and it's not that hard. So anyway, we're going to focus on putting some elements into this box tonight. So there's my logo. Now, the other thing that I know I want to do is I want to put the logo, the very same logo, I want to put it on the top of the box. Now, as I explained to you, this is the back of the box. So I would want this very same logo. Let's go edit paste. And there's another one of my logos. I'm going to bring this logo up here and it is on the graphics layer and I'm bring it to about here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my rotate tool and I'm going to just rotate this thing around holding the shift key, rotate it like that, and then I'm going to position it with my arrow key. I'm going to arrow it up just a little bit so that it sits nicely on that top panel. Okay, so now you're thinking to yourself, what is this guy doing? As I explained to you, it's very important for you to understand this. This is the back panel. You want that graphic that is on the top of the box 
to be facing forward. You want it to be facing the front. That's the front. If you close this thing, it will close in this direction, down the front of this, okay? So in order for that to happen, you need to basically r rotate this thing around. So I would put the logo here, and I would put the logo here. We take a look at my box, and I'm going to close this wine because we're done with it now. I, I close things as I get done with them, so we're done with that. Save changes, no. Okay, and we have this one. This is our box. I'm going to bring the graphics back so that you can see what we're doing. There's my graphics. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting these graphics together. I'm going to show you how I handled this, and I'm going to show you how I handled this, and I'm going to show you how I handled this. Now, again, this is what my finished box looks like. So what I'm saying to you is you don't actually have to have the finished box tonight. Um, I'm probably going to do a lot of the box, but I'm not going to hurry because I got things that I want to show you to make sure that you understand how this stuff gets done. So I'm going to, I'm going to somewhat take my time with this uh, so that you can get a pretty good, good idea of um, all the steps that I went uh, put into making this box. There's also copy. All right, this is a very important point. There's copy here. If you go to my week one, you'll see here in my, let me go to desktop, and let me go to week one. And here, the, the Chateau Vineyard required box information. I'm going to bring this up right now because I got my logo in place. And I'm going to put, okay, so here we go. Let's enable editing. Okay, so when you download your logo. And it doesn't matter whether you're doing the Chateau Vineyard or uh, whether you're doing the uh, Wild Bill or the Bill whatever um, hot sauce or whether you're doing the um, uh, Cologne. It doesn't really matter. Each one has a, a typed uh, bit of information that you need to put into your design. This is some of the information. And I'm going to go through this information and show you how I use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this. This is a, it's, it's a Word doc, okay? So you'll find it. You'll find it, no trouble. I'm going to zoom in on this guy, okay, because i got to get a, take a closer look at this. Okay, so here we have my, here we have my front and my, let me, I don't think I'm going to be needing the layers for this. Let me move them over here. There we go. And let me just bring it up a little bit more. Okay, so there we go. All right, so we got this, and yeah, okay, so now we can kind of see what's going on here. So let's go back to my, the one that I'm building right here, and let me zoom in on it. Let's go view, zoom in. There we go, and let me zoom in again. View, zoom in. There, okay, and let me bring it over a little bit. Okay, so there we have it. So what do I have so far? Basically, what I have so far is I have my background, my color, and see, I wanted to show you when I zoom this in, can you see how beautiful these little folds look? These, these folds look really great. They're very light, and they basically, this makes a beautiful presentation. They're hitting the marks just perfectly. That one actually looks like the fold looked like it might be just a touch high. Let me bring that down just one. Yeah, I think it's, that's just a little bit high. Here we go. Well, no, maybe not. No, it's fine. That's fine. This one might be over a bit. There we go. That might be it. Yeah, now that I get close, yeah, that's it. That's good. I can see it. So I have my logo, and I have my logo, uh, and if I go back to my other one, I have to put in Chateau Vineyards. I have to put the copy. I have to put my government warning. Uh, I have to put my produced and bottled information, okay? Uh, and I have to put my... Um, barcode. I have to put some graphics on the side. Um, I have to give a type of wine, which in our case is going to be the Shiraz Cabernet uh, 2004. And then I put 13% alcohol by volume approximately. You'll see this information is all on the sheet. And then the rest of it is just decorative graphics that I create. Okay. I picked up a picture and I picked up some graphics. So what I want to do right now is I want to take about 10 minutes or so to talk about graphics and how you find yourself some graphics. So let me go back to my, go back to my um, uh, Firefox 
And what I'm going to do is, I didn't actually talk about the assignment. So let's see where it says your part two rough layout. Now it's time to refine your thumbnail sketches by creating a rough layout. Rough layouts are larger and more refined than thumbnail sketches and should be done to scale and correct size uh, for your die, die line. The purpose of this stage is to work out on your best design concept so a client can see a more refined solution. Even though a rough layout may look final, it's not your finished artwork at this point. So that's the important stuff for you to read. It's This is not 100% finished. What you're going to do is you're going to put this together as much as you can, and then what you're going to do is present it to me, and I'm going to go over it and, and give you some corrections or, or tell you what I think, and then you're just going to finish it at that point next week. So this is not, it's not necessary for you to have this thing completely done this week, but you need to begin the process of putting these elements in place and thinking about what's going to go on the front, what's going to go on the back, where, where what's going to go on either side. You've got specific copy, where are you going to put that copy? Think about what's important copy, the most important copy will more than likely go on the front of the box. Uh, so, you know, you think about this, it's very important that you think about this, okay? So, again, this stage is to use to identify the packaging cha uh, challenges such as clarity, simplicity, authenticity, addressing the target audience, creating a brand image that is highly recognizable and has shelf impact. Rough layouts are also used to explore additional creative approaches suggested from client feedback, which would be my feedback, to create a composition that is not only pleasing to the eye, but also criti critically supports and communicates the message of the product. You can read this again as, as uh, you need to. Um, so we're going to use the die line that we created, which we're already doing, create a rough layout using the strongest con concept, which is what I'm basically doing. Add the color of, to your logo, at, see, add, which is the first thing I started with, uh, as per your final color scheme direction. Include all design elements and required information. Very important. Here it is. This stuff, you have to go through here, and you have to, you know, put a lot of this information in there. I'm going to show you how to do that. And it'll be this week and next week. You don't have to get all this in this week. This is a rough. So you, you need to get as much of it as you can done, but it doesn't have to be finished this week. It can be finished next week. Very important that you understand that. Um, include all design elements and required information. Uh, artwork layer, right? Your chosen product requires nutritional facts. There is a sheet on that. I'll show you where that is and how to use it. All bo boxes require a barcode to be generated. There's a barcode generator that you could use here. Uh, or uh, there, you can go online if you want, and you can pick a barcode up. You can look up barcodes, Google, Google search for barcodes, and you'll come up with tons of barcodes. It doesn't have to be a real barcode. It has to look like a normal barcode. I think, as a matter of fact, how I got my barcode was to go online, and I grabbed the barcode uh, online. So you can do that. Very, you know, very easy to do. Uh, and here, if you want to go to the barcode generator, it gives you some information that you could use. You could use the, the code 128 standard, enter eight numbers, and click create barcode. It's really simple. It'll, it'll give you an EPS, which you can then bring in and use in your um, uh, file. And maybe what I'll do is next week, if I remember to, I'll go through the process of doing this. But you can get it online if you want. It's just as easy. All right, so couple of things that I want to do. I am going to show you. I've got three pages here. I'm going to go to this page. Okay. So what I did was I did a Google search right there. Google search. Wine, black and white, vector, line, art. That's all I did. Wine, black and white, vector, line, art. And what I got was this. Now, I went to tools when I get my images. I went to images first. Okay, this is where I actually come if I do that. Go to images. Okay, and then what I do is I go to tools and I go to size and I choose larger than um, 1024 or 2 megabytes. I, 1024 by 726 is pretty good. And I end up with all this. There's all kinds of art in here. These are all different pieces of art. Now, I downloaded a couple of these and I'm going to show you what I did with them. And then you'll be able to do the same thing. You can go in and you can pick up one of these pieces of art and you can do the same basic thing that I did and you'll have a really nice piece of art that you can put on your box or a couple for that matter. So that's one, wine, black and white, vector line art. Now the other one is wine, black and white, vector 
uh, wine. Actually, I don't know why I got two wines there. So black and white vector line art of wine. Let's do it again. There we go. And again, I, th this is basically just me picking a slightly different title, okay? And in here you'll find, again, tons and tons and tons of pictures that have to do with wine. Find yourself one or two that you really like. There's some really nice ones in here. And grab them, and I'll show you what to do with them, all right, in a minute, all right? I think I used something similar to this. And uh, what else? Let me see. I don't see the others I used, um, but I did. I did find them. Did find the ones that I worked on in here, and I'm going to show you them in a minute. So then, the other thing is wine photography. So what I did was I went in and I looked wine, looked up wine photography, and again, images larger than 1024 by 768. And as you'll see, there's a ton of images. This is a nice image, really nice. See. Click on it. Look a beautiful image. That'd be a great one to put on your box. Really nice, beautiful. I didn't even see that. Here's another one that's kind of cool. Very cool looking images to go on your box. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. So my point is, there's just a ton of really beautiful images in here that you can use. This is a mock-up. We're not, you know. I think I found one that's similar to this, and and that's what I use to make make my cover art. Okay, um, not that, but it's similar. But there's so many of them in here. And again, all I did was I looked up wine photography. That's all. And you come in here and you'll find one that you can use. Make sure that you go with larger than 1024 by 768. That's a very important thing. And you just, you know, what I did was I went in and I looked at the art and I just downloaded it to my computer and I used it in my presentation. Okay? But there's a whole lot of... of pictures in here that you could use you'll you'll have no trouble finding pictures I, I if I was gonna go with a picture like this with a wine bottle I'd try to go with a generic bottle because you actually don't have a, 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 a label for your bottle and you don't wanna you know you don't wanna kinda you know make it uh, weird that you're using uh, one box with a bottle like for instance you certainly wouldn't want to use a picture like this because you're not doing Jen Pfeiffer you know what I mean? So, you know, basically just try to find generic pictures. There's a great picture, you know. At any rate, you should have no trouble. There's a nice picture that you could use right there. There's tons and tons and tons of pictures, okay? That's the point, okay? So I just wanted to show you that as well. So back to this. So I have, I have to now move on to my next area, which is to start adding elements to this. All right, so one of the things that I have is a barcode. All right, so let me let me get the barcode in here next. So I'm going to go file open, and I'm going to go looking for my barcode. Let's see where I have my barcode. My barcode is, let me think, uh, week two. Uh, where, 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 where? Uh, let's see. Oh, that's where I was. Let me see, week one, week three. Start, save, where would the barcode be? Uh, I thought I put it in that, let me go to desktop. I thought I put it in here. Uh, wine elements, barcode, 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 nope. Come on, week one, nutrition, barcode. There it is, barcode. Okay, there's my barcode. Okay, now the barcode, let me just show you this. This is important. Here's my barcode. I'm going to put this back here, and I'm going to make this red just so that you could see something. So I make that red, and, and let me go, object, arrange, send to back, there. Okay, so you see how I have a little area of white there? This barcode comes like that. I'm gonna move this out of the way. When I, when I get this barcode, I got this barcode like this. Now, you don't want your barcode to be cut that close. You don't want that. You want a little bit of white behind it. So what I did was I just created a white rectangular shape and I brought the white rectangular shape in and I situated that behind the barcode. So now what I have is I got a little bit of clearance around my barcode. That's what you want. That's the look that you want. You do not want your barcode to be jammed right up to the color. You want some clearance. This thing is going to be re read by a scanner. 
So it's very important that the scanner has no trouble in differentiating the barcode from any background color. So you don't want to put it against the background color, okay? Like this, for instance. I don't know whether it's even going to do that. No, it's not. Edit undo. Yeah. Um, you don't want it to be against a background color. You want it to be against white. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this. Let's delete this. So I have my barcode, and I'm going to align them that way, and I'm going to align them that way. And actually, that's not right. I want it to come up like that. Let's make it a little bit more. That's probably good right there. Okay, and I'm going to select both of these guys and go Object Group. And then I'm going to go Edit Copy. And then I'm going to switch into my Design. And I'm going to go Edit Paste. And there's my barcode. Way too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my barcode over to the back. Now, I could put the barcode on the bottom if I wanted to. Uh, but I think I'm going to put it on the back. I don't want to put it on the front. And I don't necessarily want to put it on the side. So I'm going to put it on the back. And I'm going to scale the thing down. So I'm going to get the scale tool and I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to scale this barcode down until I get it to a much smaller size. Something along the size of that is probably pretty good. Right there. So there's my barcode. So now I've added one element besides my logo to this. I'm going to go file save and I'm saving this. Okay, because now I'm beginning to slowly, gradually put my elements together. So this is what you're ultimately going to do. You're going to come in here and you're going to add your elements. So let's take a look. See now I got my barcode in there, okay? And yeah, I got my barcode in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding my, my elements on the front. So my barcode, I'm done with that. I'm going to get rid of the barcode. Save it. No. And I have this piece of art that I created. Let me see if I can find this. Let's go file, open, and let's go into my, uh, where are we, week one? Yeah, wine elements. Let's see here, chateau, wine glass. I think it's wine glass one. Let me see. That's it. So I created this wine glass, okay? Now, the only thing is I don't really like... I don't really like these colors very much after I look at this. I, I think the colors are wrong. So one of the things that I thought I would do is I would go in to Adobe Color. Uh, let me sign in again. Yeah, let me go. Sign in. Okay. Let's, let's go into Adobe Color. I hope you're familiar with Adobe Color. Uh, the web address for this is https colon slash slash color dot adobe.com slash create slash color dash wheel slash and you get Adobe Color CC. So what I want to do here is I want to come up with some nice color that I can use for wine. So what I do is I go to explore and when I come into explore there's most popular, there's all themes, there's my applications, there's all kinds of things, but I generally just come over here, and what I would do is I would come in and I would type something like wine, W-I-N-E, or let's try maybe red wine, R-E-D, red wine, okay? And then I'm going to hit enter, enter, there we go, and now I have... I think I got red wine. Yeah, red wine. Here we go, red wine. So I'm, I'm getting all these colors in here, okay? And as you go down, there's, there's many, many different colors. I don't, you know, I'm not really so crazy about these colors, actually. Let me just try wine. Let me get rid of the red. Delete that. Let me hit enter and see if I get something different. Yep, yeah, I do. And I'm not that crazy about these either. Let's go down. Let's see. I'll find one. Yeah, this one will work, I think. This one may be all right. So let's download this guy. All right, I think let me download it. And there it is, a, a pink wine ASE. See it? That's the file format. So I'm downloading this. I'm going to hit OK. And in a second, what's going to happen is there. OK, so I'm going to, let me see if I download it. Where did I download it to? Uh, where did it go? 
Um, where did it go to? Hmm. What happened here? Download. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it's here. Yeah, there it is, right there. Okay. So let me drag this to my desktop. Right there. Okay. So I got my I got my pink wine ASE. Let's go into my wine glass. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here and open, let's see here, uh, save swatch, no, save swatch, open swatch library, there we go, open swatch library, other library, and then I'm going to go to my desktop, and where's my ASC, let's see where my ASC is, pink wine, ASC, see it, ASC, click on that, and click open. Now, it opens up here in this little panel, pink wine ASC. There's my swatches panel. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this, or actually, I'm gonna click on that little folder, and I'm going to drag that and drop it right into my swatches panel. And now I have those colors, the ASC colors, in my swatches panel, okay? So how, how am I gonna use these? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click on that color, and I'm gonna try maybe that color. And then I'm gonna click on this color, and I'm going to try that color. So now I have those colors and I kind of like them, but let's see, maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, take this color here. Let's go to window color. And let's see what we got here. And let's go to HSB. Okay, so HSB. And what I think I wanna do is I wanna make a darker version of this color like that. There we go, and maybe that's not even dark enough. Let's make it a little bit darker, right about like that's good. Okay, so now I'm going to add this swatch, okay? And now I have that color, and I'm going to click on this one, and I, I can close this, and now I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to click on that. I guess it's that darker color right there. That's what it is. And now these two areas here, what I'm going to do is use the lighter color, like that and like that and now i've actually come up with what i think is a prettier color i like the colors a lot better so anyway this is one of my pe this is one of my pieces of graphic now the same thing that's going on with this is is what's going on with my other art if you take a look at my layers panel let me go to my layers panel here right here yeah if i go to my layers panel see i got this background layer now, the reason I got the background layer is because there's white elements here, and if I hide that background layer, you really can't see anything. You know what I mean? So I'm hiding that layer now. I'm going to select this piece of art, and you can see now it's selected. There it is. I'm going to go edit copy. Then I'm going to come into my dye line, uh, my dye line piece. I'm going to go edit paste, and there is my piece of art. And I'm going to take this piece of art, and I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to place it right about there. Now, this piece of art needs to be a little bit bigger, I'm afraid, so I'm going to get my, uh, my scale tool, and I'm going to click, and I'm going to hold the shift key down, and I'm going to bring it up. And I don't want to bring it up too much, but I do want to bring it up, and I want to get it until that's probably actually pretty good, but i got to bring that right up to here. I want to bring that right up to the fold, right about there. Oop, too hard. Okay, so now let's see what we got. There we go. Okay, so what I've done now is I've added a really nice little graphic to the front of my box. Chateau Vineyard logo. I got to do something on the back. I got to do something on the side. The wine glass is done. I'm going to close this thing because I'm done with it. I'll save it. Yes, you've now seen how I went into, um, you've now seen how I went into here. Okay, and you saw how I basically downloaded this as an ASE. Okay, hit okay, and uh, hit okay, and now I'll go back into here. And if I come up into my downloads, there it is Bride's Bouquet right there. Bride's Bouquet, there's the Bride's Bouquet ASE, which I dragged to my desktop, and then I'm going to do it again just so that you see it and make sure you have it, okay? So I'm gonna come in here. I'm going to grab Bride's Bouquet ASC and drag it to the desktop so you see me do it again. 
And then what you do is you come in here to your swatch panel and you go uh, open swatch library, other library. And then you're just going to go to your desktop and you're going to look for Bride's Bouquet and hit open. And there it opens up and you grab the folder and you just drag that thing to there. And I think I got pink wine in there too. So now I don't have pink wine in here. If I wanted pink wine, I can grab the pink wine one and I can bring that one in here as well. So now I have those pink wine colors and I have Bride Bouquet if I decided that I want those colors. Uh, I think those colors all work pretty nicely because they kind of work with these colors right there. Will I use all those colors? Probably not. I'm, I'm more trying to show you how to, how to do this. Now that you've done this, what I would do is I would take my, my pink wine and I'd stick it in my folder. I think, wait a minute, that's not the folder. It is uh, week one. Yeah, so I'd stick this in here as in a folder. We could create a new folder here called color right there. C-O-L-O-R, color, uh, and then I'm going to drag this in and drag that in, and now I have those fold, those little uh, AS, A, ASE files in there, okay? All right, let's go back to here. So now I have my cover, color, uh, cover art. Let's take a look at what's going on here. So now I need to start adding some more copy to this, and actually what I think I'm going to do, let me go close this up you know uh, I'm going to so that top is done that's done uh, the sides oh, you know what let me work on a piece of graphics for the sides okay so I've got two things that I'm going to do I think what I'm going to do is something slightly different I'm going to show you how I did this but I'm also going to show you how I do do a, a, another glass I'll put another glass on another side so let me go file open and let me go into wine glass clip art and hit open. Okay, so now I get this wine glass clip art. And I'm going to go view, fit all in window. Ah, view, zoom out. And there go. Yeah, so actually this thing is pretty big. That's what it is. So I'm going to do this. I am going to get my artboard tool. And I am going to stretch my artboard out. So what I'm doing is I'm stretching my artboard out so that it fits my piece of art. There we go. Now if I go with my regular selection tool and I go view fit artboard in window, there is my wine glass. So what am I doing here? What I'm going to do is I'm going to select this and I'm going to show you how to take a piece of art that we grab from the internet which is essentially a bitmap. This is a bitmap, and it's a piece of crap bitmap. It really looks terrible. But what I'm going to do is I am going to trace this. You might know how to do this from other classes, but I'm going to show you how to trace this and make a beautiful piece of art out of it that we can use for our package. So how I do that is I select the bitmap, I go to the object menu, and I go down to image trace, make. There. Now, you can see it's already traced this, but there's a panel here called the image trace panel. And I'm going to bring the image trace panel out to see whether I can make this look even a little bit better. So I got this thing called threshold, and I have an advanced tab that I can open up by clicking that arrow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to play around with the threshold level to see if I can make this look any better. And I'm looking carefully. I don't know whether I'm actually making it look worse that way. There, yeah, I'm going the wrong direction. I'm going to take it down, the threshold down lower. And actually, that does look a little bit better. Let's make the paths a little higher and see if that improves it. Um, it might have a little bit. And let's go to the corners. Let's bring the corners out to maximum. Yeah, that cleaned it up a little bit, actually. That actually improved it. So what I did was I lowered the threshold. Now, just so that you understand, every time you do this, the artwork's going to be different. You're not always going to do the exact same thing. Sometimes the threshold won't move as much, you know. Sometimes it'll move more. I just moved the threshold back up. And I don't know, I'm not seeing it change very much, so I don't know that it might have a little bit. 
And anyway, noise, I'm going to remove the noise. See if that helps. Eh, maybe a bit. Maybe a bit. Let me bring some more noise into it and see what that does to it. It's not doing much of anything, actually. So let me bring the corners down. And that's not doing too much either. So these things aren't terribly effective as far as doing anything with it at this point. So at this point, if that's the case, actually, I think I just saw a glitch come in there. Yeah, yeah. So actually, the lower setting for the pads works a little bit better. Yeah, there we go. And this one here, the corners, let me go higher in the corners. There we go. That, that I see it. I see it a little bit happening now. Okay, so I, I, what I did was I lowered the threshold, lowered the paths, bumped the, cor the corners up, and let me drag down the noise and see if I can get an even better look that way. I don't see that noise is doing anything. It's not really doing anything with noise. Noise isn't really affecting this that much. Let me see if I can get the pass down a little lower. Yeah, see, now it's starting to fall apart again. So it needs to be probably somewhere in the neighborhood of this. See, see how it's changing? You can see it changing. The noise or the pads are really changing it quite a bit. So really just a question of dragging it around until you reach a point that you like. And that's probably pretty good right there. All right, so now I'm going to go to the object menu again, and I'm going to go to image trace, expand. And now I've expanded this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go object, ungroup. I'm going to put this to the side and go object, ungroup. Actually, I might not need to do that. No, I don't need to do it. Click on the outside of this. And there are extra elements out here, these white areas. They're going to go bye-bye. And they're going to go bye-bye. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag a rectangular shape around the whole thing, just like this. And I'm going to go Object, Arrange, Send to Back. There we go. And I'm going to put a wacky color into this again, just so I can see what's going on with this. Okay, and also what I'm going to have to go is window color, and I'm going to have to change this color from grayscale, which is what it is right now, to RGB. There we go. So now I have, see I still got that white area in the corner there? I'm going to delete that. Okay, now I don't think I want this white stuff here, so I'm going to delete that white stuff. Yeah, that looks better. And I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to delete this. Okay, and I'm going to delete this. There, that looks much better. I don't exactly like this black thing right here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to see if I can maybe knock some of that away. So I'm going to come in here carefully, and I'm going to drag out a rectangular shape. Let's go like that. Okay, and let me zoom in on this. Let me zoom in on this so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to try to get rid of that. Yeah, so I have a problem. Let me do this. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this, and I'm going to walk it up. Okay, walk it up to about there. Um, probably like that. Okay, that's good. Now, I, I don't want to clip these corners like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my direct selection tool. The direct selection tool will allow me to click on that top corner and it will allow me to move that corner over until I reach a point where I want it to be, which is probably there, which is pretty good. That, I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to use the left arrow key to move that over until I reach a point, which is probably like that. I think that'll work. Okay, so now I'm going to get the regular selection tool hold down the shift key and select that and that. I'm going to go to the Pathfinder, go to Window, Pathfinder, watch what I do here. And I'm going to click on minus front. And you see what it did, is it knocked that away. Now it is a little sloppy still up there, so let's go edit, undo, subtract. And let me zoom in on this a little tiny bit more. Let me try to do this a little neater. See if I can do this just a bit neater. So I'm going to get the direct selection tool on this one, and I'm going to click on this, and I'm just going to move it over one more right there. And then I've got to fix the other side. The other side is where the problem is. So I'm going to click on that with the direct selection tool, and I'm going to go like this. Okay, so let's go back. Yep. 
right about like that. Okay, uh, will that do it? Yeah, I think that'll do it. And, and I'm going to actually clean this little thing up in a minute. So I'm going to select this regular selection tool, click on this, click on this, and minus front. Good. Okay, now let's go view, fit artboard and window. There we go. Now I have a choice. I could either just leave this part or I could select this part with the group selection tool and I can delete that. So you see what I end up with is I end up with a glass that just has some wine down here. Okay, and what I would do with this is I would select this part of it, leave this alone for a minute. I'd select this part of it and then I'd come into my colors, go to my colors. Let me move this over so I can see it. Go to my colors and let's put some color into here. So I need to, um, all right, let me make this thing default black and white. There we go. And with no, no stroke. There we go. And I'm going to bring the fill forward. Okay. And it's going to be white. I want it to be white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add white. New swatch. Add white. There we have it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the white. Okay. And this and this. Select all those together. And I'm going to go object group. Then I'm going to come into my box right here. And I'm going to go, image trace can go away. I don't, I'm done with it. I'm going to go edit, paste. There. Okay. Oh. Oh. oh, my goodness. Let me get this. Let's go edit, copy. There we go. And now let's bring it in. Edit, paste. Boom. There it is. And it's huge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it down. Let's bring this thing down. Uh zoom out there we go and let me bring this thing down oh geez I, I want this I want the free transform tools what I want there we go hold down the shift key and let's bring this thing down until it maybe fits the side panel like this let me bring it down until I can get it to fit that side panel there we go ah come on you on the side panel like that. There we go. There. That's not too bad. And move it in place. So now I have my wine on the side panel. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is I got two areas of color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by zooming in on, on these two guys right here. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the direct select. Uh, the group selection tool, I'm going to click on this area here, and I'm going to get my eyedropper tool, and I'm going to eyedrop that red. And so now I got that red in there, looking pretty good. Yep, and now I'm going to use the group selection tool, and I'm going to click on this, and then I'm going to get the eyedropper tool, and I'm going to choose the brighter red like that. Great, looks good. So now what I want to do is I think I want to select with the group selection tool, I want to click on this, and I want to go to the window menu, and I want to go to transparency. Okay, now I can either try working with a blend mode. I don't know whether the blend mode is going to work or not. Uh, let me go view hide edges. So I'm going to hide the edges on this so we can see it better. Oh, that's very cool. Let's try a couple of different blend modes. Let's try soft light. That looks cool. Maybe it, maybe it is what I'm going to go with, hard light. Yeah, see, that's just like making it white again. Let's go to color dodge. What does that do? Nothing. Let's go lighten. Nope, that doesn't do anything either. Let's see what multiply looks like. Yeah, it just drops it away. It's got to be probably overlay. That is very cool that way. There's one more thing I'm going to try. Let me bring this thing back up to normal. And let me try opacity. Let me just see if I lower the opacity on it. Let me bring it down in opacity because that might be the way to go. Yeah, let's bring it down to about 50. That ain't bad. Let me bring it down to like 30. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. And you know what? I think I'm going to do the same thing with this. Let me grab this guy here. And let me see if I can bring that down to 30 as well. There we go. Yeah. And I think I'll do the same thing with this. Hold down the shift key with that. 
and hold the shift key down with that. And let me bring it, wait a minute. You know what, let's go view, show edges. Let's see what I got selected. I got those are selected correctly. That one too, there we go. And now let's go to opacity. And let's make the opacity 30%. 30. There, let's see what that looks like. That looks great. That looks really good. Let's go view, fit our board and window. That looks pretty good. So there I have a wine glass on the side. I'm experimenting, I'm playing, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with this. Now in the end, I may not want to keep this because it may be too many glasses that I have here, but at least that's something I'm thinking about how I want this thing to be done. I'm trying to use some of the art that I downloaded. So I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to close this for the time being, okay? Close that because we're done with it. Save it? No. Now I'm going to go File, Open, and I'm going to see if I can locate my grapes. There they are. Hit Open. Now what I like about these grapes, I like them because they got great leaves, and I like some of these little scrolling effects. And if you go to my original box, you can see that I've actually used some of these things, okay? And they come out pretty cool, as a matter of fact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my grape elements, and I'm going to select the grape elements. And once again, I'm going to go to the object menu, and I'm going to go to image trace, make. And there you go. I've traced this thing. Now, um, some of this can't be used because actually I got artwork that runs through it. But I use this thing right here. So I really only need one thing. All right. Now, one other thing that's happening here, I'm going to go, uh, I think this will work just fine. So I'm going to go object, image, trace, expand. Okay. And now I got it. Now let me make my artboard a little bit bigger because my artboard is too small. Let me bring my artboard over to here. And let me bring my artboard over to here. And I will bring my artboard up to the top. Oh, ah, shoot. Let me get rid of that artboard. Oh, man. There we go. Delete it. There we go. And I want this artboard. Yeah, I want to bring it up, actually. There we go. And I want to bring the artboard down. Okay, so what I'm really looking for here, I'm really looking for this. I'm going to get rid of this. Let me, let me go to my direct selection tool. Let me see if I can get the background out of here. Uh, let's go object, ungroup. Okay, let me see if I can get rid of the background first. There we go. Delete that. Okay, good. That's gone. And let me get rid of some of these. I don't want them. And let me get rid of these. I don't want them either. Perfect. What I do want is, um, I don't want any of this. I, I, I don't want this. So I'm just throwing stuff away. And I'm going to keep some of this stuff for maybe fooling around with later. Let me get this thing over here because I may use that. But what I'm really looking for I don't want any of these grapes either, I don't think. I don't want the grapes. I'm not looking for grapes. So I'm going to get rid of the grapes. There we go. Delete that. Keep some of these scrolls because they're interesting. Okay? And I don't know whether I'm going to actually use any of them. Just trying to show you that what I do is I sort of select the elements that I want. And I get rid of the junk that I don't want. So now I can take this thing and I can get this out of the way. Okay? Um, Control-Z. I missed something. Control-Z. There we go. I get all of it. There we go, and I can drag it over here. Ah, come on, darn it. Try it again. There we go. I probably should be grouping these, but it's no big deal at this point. Oh, and by the way, you notice that there's little white things in here? They got to go too. That's why it's very important when you're doing this, it's very important to put color behind the background. Now, I'm going to, I don't want this big thing up here. I don't want that. I'm going to delete that all together, and I'm going to delete this too, and I'm going to delete this too. And I don't think I want any of this. I don't really want any of that, so I'm going to delete that as well. So the things that I've kept are these things over here. But here's the thing. i I, I got to look at this carefully because this is what I'm going to be using. So what I want to do is I want to come in here, and I want to create a panel behind this. Object, arrange, send to back. There we go. And now I'm going to change the color of it to some goofy color again, make it some goofy color like this, okay, just so that you could see it. And remember, remember that we're working with color here, and this is grayscale. It just was converted. So I'm going to go to Window Color, and I'm going to change it from grayscale. 
Oh, I hit the wrong one, I'm afraid. Let me get that out of here. Window color. There we go. What the heck? Not, not the color panel. Window color. What? All right, let's see what's going on with this. Window color. Wow, the image trace panel, what's that? Wow. All right, let me delete this, delete this, delete this, and delete this. And why is this thing giving me trouble here? Where's my color panel? Window color. Image trace. Oh, I bet you I know what it is. It's down here underneath it. <laughs> There's your problem. There it is. So I'm not nuts. It's just coming out strangely. I'm going to change this to RGB. Okay. Now, the reason I'm doing this is so I can see what's going on. All right. So I got colors here. Um, I actually don't have colors here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take this, and I'm going to go edit copy. All right. And now I'm going to come into my this right here. I'm going to go edit paste. Okay. So now I have that piece of art here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this thing right now. Uh, I'm going to make sure, first of all, let me go to my layers panel. I want to make sure that all my artwork falls on the right layer. So this is on the folds layer. That's no good. I want to drag that down to the graphics layer. This is all, on, you see, this is on the folds layer too. So let me select all of this as well. Let me click on that, on that, that that, 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 and that, and let me go object group, and then I'm going to bring that down from the folds layer to the graphics layer. So I want to keep all my graphics on my folds layer. There's my folds. My bleed is hidden. My background. Okay, and now I have this. I'm going to make this white for one minute. I just want to make this white for a minute. I'm just going to make this white so I can see what I'm doing here. There we go. So now I got that white shape right there. So what I want to do with this is I want to group this. Let's go object group, okay? And let's go edit copy, edit paste in place, and I'm going to move it down a little bit, just about like that, and I'm going to rotate it around. Let me rotate this thing around like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it down a little bit. And then I'm going to move it in a little bit, something like that. Okay? So now I have that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move this guy over some, like that. Okay? And then I'm going to select both of these guys. And let's go edit copy, edit paste in place, and I'm just going to walk this down like this. Look at that. Okay, and I'm creating a pattern. Look at that. Isn't that great? Looks cool. We're getting there. So I'm going to click on this guy and this guy, and I'm going to move it up a little bit, like about like that. Okay, and now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to play around with the color a little bit. So I'm going to start off by coming in here, and I'm zooming in on it so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick my, my um, with my group selection tool, let me get my group selection tool. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to give it that purple color. Okay, so now the color, look, the color blends right into the background. But here's what I'm going to do, and this is going to make this interesting. Once again, I'm going to go to my color panel. If it's out already, yes, it is, my color panel. And here's what I want to do. I want to convert this to, to um, HSB, Hue, Saturation, and Brightness. Now, here's what I want to do with this. What I want to do with this is I want to, re I want to make this thing lighter like that, Okay. And maybe what I want to do is I want to make it a little bit lighter this way, too. Maybe make it lighter that way as well. There we go. And now I'm going to select this piece, 
and I'm going to go the same way with this hue, saturation, and brightness. Okay, and I'm going to make this that purple color, and I have to go back into the hue, saturation, brightness. Uh, hue, saturation, brightness. Yeah, and make that lighter. There we go. And maybe just like this might work. Yeah, that looks cool as heck. There we go. All right. Now this, maybe, let me just, maybe this might be just a little bit too light. So what I might do with this, I may back it up a little bit and darken it down just a little bit. Might be just a touch too light. I don't want this to be overwhelming. That's probably good. Oh, yeah, I like it very much. That looks great. So now watch what I'm going to do. I got these two colors, okay? Now, what I might want to do is I might want to trap these colors and keep them. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to add a new swatch, which will be this color. And then I'm going to select this guy, and I'm going to trap that color by going new swatch, and I'm going to bring that color in. All right, now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to alternate these colors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that, and I'm using, I want to make sure I use my uh, group selection tool because I have them grouped. I'm going to click on this one, and then I'm going to get my eyedropper tool, and I'm going to click that color. And now that becomes that color. Then I'm going to get my group selection tool, and I'm going to click on this one, and what I'm going to do is get my eyedropper tool, and I'm going to capture that color. Okay, so I'm alternating the colors. That's what I'm doing. I'm alternating the colors. Okay? So now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to come over here, click on this with my, again, i got to get my group selection tool. Right here. Here we go. Get my group selection tool over here, and I want to catch that color right here. And I'm going to alternate them back to the light color. This one will be the light. Right. And then I'm going to grab this one, and this one is going to be the dark again. And I'm alternating them, just alternating them, because these are just decorative elements. That's all. The sides are going to be decorative elements. There we go. And then this, I'm going to go back with the light again. Um, oh, here we go. I keep forgetting that these are grouped. All right, so now I'm going to uh, get the eyedropper tool. And that is going to be the light, I believe. Yep. Yeah, that's right. And then this guy here, and that's going to be the dark again, like that. There. Now let's go view, fit our board and window, and let's see what we got. Looks pretty cool. There we go. Okay. That looks pretty cool. Now what we might want to do here is we may want to take this guy, and we may want to just move it over here for a second. And maybe what we want to do is grab all of these, okay? Grab all of them. And let's go object group. And let's go edit copy. Or better yet, better yet, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to reflect this. Watch this. Bring out the reflect tool. And I'm going to preview it. And it reflected it. And I'm going to copy it. And now I have a duplicate, which I'm going to move over to here. And what I've done is I've mirrored image, I mirror imaged it so that on the other side panel, it's facing the opposite direction, which I think looks fabulous. Now I'm going to take this thing, and I'm going to move this thing in place here, and I'm going to make sure that that thing, I'm going to grab it, I'm going to go object, arrange, bring to front, uh, and I can't do it. I'm going to have to cut it. Edit, cut, and then edit, paste in front. There we go. And now I have that. Okay. Now, the only problem with this is that this is partially transparent. So that shows through that a little bit. You know, I don't know whether you like that or not, but that's what that's going to do. That's going to show through slightly like that. So if I wanted to fix this, what I would do is I would get my uh, group selection tool, and I would select this, and I would go back to the transparency. I'll show you how to fix this. Go to Window and go to Transparency uh, right there, and I would bring the transparency level back all the way up, okay? And then what I would do is I would choose my 
my gray, my color like this, okay? And then what I might do with this is maybe come in here and go HSB and then just maybe lighten that up. See? And maybe that is a little bit too much. Bring it back up some. Or let's see, darken it. Maybe darken it. Let me go to view, hide edges. Let's see what that looks like. I don't like it that way. I think I'm probably going to have to lighten it. Bring it out like that. Yeah, that's probably good. And let me see if I can maybe gray it out some. Now let's go back this way. Eh, kind of weird. Kind of weird. I'm, I might end up not using this, this glass at all. I may end up not using the glass. But at any rate, at this point, I've got it. Let's go view fit artboard and window. And there's what we have so far. There's my package design. The, op the other option would be for me to just basically, oop, control Z. The other option would be for me to just um, remove this thing altogether. Okay, select this thing. Wait a minute. Come on, you. Oh, yeah. View, show edges. There we go. And now I have it selected. Let me just move it out there. So that would be my other option. Okay. So as you can see, I'm beginning to put together my box. And I did it by creating elements and just playing with these elements. That's really what it is. Um, these are decorative elements. These are actual, uh, this is your logo. This is essential. This is essential. You know, another thing that I might do is I might substitute that with this. The only problem with this is if I put that there, I have to put type over top of it, and I'm not sure that that would work. However, I do have two options now. This thing here could be made a little bit smaller. Okay, I could hold this thing down and make it a little tiny bit smaller like that maybe would work. And then, yeah, see, that's not too bad. I can actually bring that down and I can still put copy around that. So I'm, I do have a couple of options here that I can work with, all right? But don't forget, I still have to come in here and I have to add the wine type, uh, the brand name and wine producer. That goes on the back panel. The vintage year. That will go on the front. Name and address of bottler, that goes on the back. The vineyard designation, Chateau Estate Vineyard, that could go on the back. It could go on the front. Percentage of alcohol by volume could be on the back, but it probably should be on the front. Net contents mandatory goes with the percentage of alcohol. Contains sulfites, that usually goes very small with the alcohol content and the net contents. Government warning definitely goes on the back. Barcode, we already got the barcode on there. And then this ad additional information is what I would call romance copy. And I put that romance copy right there. And I actually took Chateau Vineyards. I'll show you how I did this. I took the Chateau Vineyards. Let me come in here and I'll show you what I did with this. I come in here and I grabbed the Chateau Vineyards like this all right hold on let me do this this is going to be a real pain i remember it now a there we go vineyards i hope i got it all i don't think i do there we got it there we go i don't think i got that a there we go the i this is hard because i i should probably make it bigger this may i may end up screwing this up the first time but we'll see uh let's go nope i didn't get that there we go. And D and S. There we go. Let's go. Edit, copy. Let's see if I got it. Edit, copy. Edit, paste. There we go. I think I got it. And then I'm going to bring it over here. Nope, I didn't. I got part. Damn it. Control Z. Control Z. Okay, I didn't get the D. Let me get that D. Uh, I didn't get the whole D. There we go. Edit, copy. Let's try it again. Copy. Edit, paste. I think I got it this time. Let's see. Bring it over here. Oh, no, I didn't get it. Damn it. <laughs> see, it's very hard. Control Z. Okay, let me zoom in on it because that's the only way I'm going to really do it. Yeah, see, I can see what's missing is right here. The, the, the inner part of that R didn't get selected, but now I have it. Oh, boy. Oh, jeez. Jesus, what a disaster. That was all that work for nothing. I got to do it again. Oh, you know why? I have the wrong tool. Here we go. Now I got it. Right, so I'm going to click on this. Shift click H. See H. A. Oh, come on, you. There we go. T. 
E. A. Come on, you. I didn't get that center part. U. V. I. N. This is hard. E. I'm holding the shift key down as I do this. A. I got to get that inner piece. R. And the outer edge. There we go. D. And the inner. There we go. And S. Okay. I think I got the whole thing that time. Edit, copy. Let's go view, fit our board and window, and edit, paste. Oh, come on. I didn't want that back. I guess I got the back too. Let me delete that. Okay, so there's my Chateau Vineyards though. And now I can enlarge this thing. So let's enlarge this thing. There we go. There we go. And let me bring it over, put it into position. It's way too big. So I'm going to scale it down again. Hold down the shift key and let's scale it. Ah! Right, let me try it again. I gotta get it right. Hold on. Shift key. There we go. And I'm going to scale that down. Oh, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, right like that. Uh, about like that. There we go. There. So I got Chateau Vineyards for the back of the box. Okay. So there's another thing, another element, file save. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the process of building the graphics for this box. And some of the things that you saw me do tonight, how I took graphics uh, from online and turned the graphics into um, vector shapes by tracing them and then playing around with the color uh, and messing around with different types of color, HSB, for instance, uh, hue, saturation, and brightness allows me to modify the brightness. If I take a purple color, okay, like if I come in here with a, with a shape, like I create that shape, and I make it that color right there, if I come into hue, saturation, and brightness, I can get variations of that color. See, now I made a darker version of that color, darker again. Or I could make it a lighter version of that color, lighter again, okay? It's basically the same color, and then I could come up here with the saturation, and I can desaturate it, and I can make it lighter that way, or I can make it darker that way, and I get a grayer looking color. All of these are, all of these are variations of that, of that base color right there. But I'm actually coming in and playing around with those different color uh, those the saturation and brightness on this thing so I get different colors okay so again this is what I'm looking for you to do this week I'm looking for you to begin the process of putting together your box very important for you to understand your front panel is here and the most important information and the most decorative information goes on the front panel the back panel is here the side panels are here and the side panels can be decorative or you can do things. I don't wonder how this thing would look on a side panel. It might look okay there. Let's see, we'll find out. Yeah, see, it's got to go. Got to go. Let's go. Edit, cut, and let's get this thing selected. Let's go. Edit, paste in front. There we go. Yeah, you know. Again, as I say, I think it's too complicated. I think it gets a lost by doing that. So I'd get rid of that. Well, either one of these two, and I don't know whether I like this one better. I kind of think maybe I'm going to stay with this one. We'll see. I'm going to keep playing with it. Next week, I'm going to build on this. All right. Like I say, you don't have to have this thing finished. You have to get what you need to get is, let's go to view, fit artboard and window. What you need to be able to submit for week two is you need to be able to submit this. Okay. This is what's most important that I see your bleed, your trim, and your fold lines. That's the first part. The second part is I need to see you begin to put your box together. Does it have to be complete? No, but you need to have the beginnings of your box being put together. I need to, to see what the graphics are going to look like. You have to figure out what your background color is going to be and how you're going to do it and then how you're going to put your elements on your page. So I need to begin to see that. That's it, um, and I, I hope you understand it. If you have any questions or any problems, give me a call, 908-821-5033. Come and see me in Blackboard. I'll work with you. Thank you, and you have a good night.